All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all doing all right and staying strong and solid in these times that we're in. I pray that you have repented and that you are baptized. I pray that you are safe, protected, and prayed up. And I just hope that whatever situation that you're going through, that the Lord is with you, that he guides you, he protects you, he looks out for you, he comforts you. I just pray that your mental health gets better, and I just hope that your situation clears up as well. I pray that you take it one day at a time and you just be more grateful and appreciative of the things that God is doing for you. Amen. We have to thank God for waking us up and giving us another day. We have to thank God for getting us through the night. Thank God for being safe, coming in and coming out. Let us thank the Lord for food in our belly, clothes in our back, and a roof over our head. Amen. We have to appreciate things more often because there's so much things going on all over the world. So much people out there suffering in different ways that we can't even imagine all four corners of the earth. You know, So um, we have to really thank God for things before we start complaining or murmuring or uh, being so bitter and angry, you know what I mean? We have to calm down, find that inner peace, and just thank God and rejoice, give him some praise, and just take it one day at a time, amen? Welcome, family, body of Christ, greetings, shalom, people, all tribes, all nations, all languages, all tongues, all peoples, all four corners of the earth, all faces, all races. Whether you are an Israelite or a Gentile, it is all right. Let us praise the Lord, let us fellowship, let us gather, amen? Yes, yes, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, y'all. Yes, yes, let us love the Lord our God with all of our mind, heart, and soul. Let us love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Let us obey the law, statutes, and commandments. Let us obey the gospel. And let us know the Lord better. Let us do Father's will and Father's business. Let us put our hands to the plow and keep working for the Lord until his son comes back. Amen. His son has come back like a thief in the night. So let us have our oil and lamp ready. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. We have to keep working hard for the kingdom of heaven. We have to keep spreading the gospel. We have to keep doing God's will. We got to keep healing people. We have to keep ministering. We have to keep the evangelism. You know, we have to keep doing all the works of God, all the works of Christ, the good works. Amen. Because so much people out there need deliverance. So much people out there need the truth. So much people out there need the gospel. So much people out there need sound doctrine. Just so much people just need the word of God, God's presence, his love, his mercy. The more people just need more examples of the Lord out there. All right. Because we're living in a very dark, fallen, evil, wicked world. So we have to be light to the world and salt to the earth. Amen. We have to be a royal priesthood and we have to show kindness and examples of peace and love and harmony. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. So let's hold it down. All right. Just got to thank God for another day. Amen. And just appreciate it, you know, and, you know, look forward to better days. I know it's a little crazy for certain people in their scenarios right now, but got to trust in the Lord and hang in there and be patient and firm and strong and steadfast. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. All All right. So in today's message, we're going to continue the Bible reading series. All right. We left off at 2 Kings chapter 12. Now we're going to continue from the book of 2 Kings chapter 13 and onward. All right. So we'll go through with the book of 2 Kings chapter 13 and then we'll go with a a priestly blessing. We'll close out with a prayer and giving God and his son all the glory, praise and honor forever. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. All right. So let us dive into 2 Kings chapter 13. In the three and twentieth year of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, Ahaziah, the king of Judah, Jeho- Jehoaz, the son of Jehu, began to reign over Israel and Samaria and reigned seventeen years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord and followed the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. He departed not therefrom. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he delivered them into the hand of Hazael, king of Syria and into the hand of Benadad, the son of Hazael, all their days. And Jehoahaz Jehoahaz besought the Lord, and the Lord hearkened to him, for he saw the oppression of Israel, because the king of Syria Syria oppressed them. And the Lord gave Israel a savior, so that they went out from under the hand of the Syrians, and the children of Israel dwelt in their tents as before time. Nevertheless, they departed not from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, who made Israel sin, but walked therein, and there remained the grove also in Samaria. Neither did he leave of the people to Jehoaz, but fifty horsemen, and ten chariots, and ten thousand footmen. For the king of Syria had destroyed them, and had made them like the dust by threshing. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoaz, Jehoaz, and all that he did, and his might, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? And Jehoaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. And Joash, his son, reigned in his stead. In the thirty and seventh year of Joash, king of Judah, began Jehoash, 
the son of Jehoahaz, to reign over Israel and Samaria and reigned 16 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel sin, but he walked therein. And the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did and his might wherewith he fought against Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? And Joash slept with his fathers, and Jeroboam sat upon his throne. And Joash was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, O my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he, he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thy hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it, and Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, Open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot. And he shot, and he said, The arrow of the Lord deliverance, and the arrow of deliver and the arrow of deliverance from Syria, for thou shalt smite the Syrians in effect till thou have consumed them. And he said, Take the arrows, and he took them, and he said unto the king of Israel, Smite upon the ground, and he smote thrice, and stayed. And the man of God was wroth with him, and said, Thou shouldest have smitten five or six times, then hast thou smitten Syria till thou hast consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria, but thrice. And Elisha died, and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass as they were burying a man, that, behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the men into a sepulchre of Elisha. And when the men and when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up upon his feet. But Hazael, king of Syria, oppressed Israel all the days of Jehoaz. And the Lord was gracious unto them and had comp compassion on them and had respect unto them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and would not destroy them, neither cast he them from his presence as yet. So Hazael, king of Assyria, died and Benadad, his son, reigned in his stead. And Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, took again out of the hand of Benadad, the son of Hazael, the cities which he had taken out of the hand of Jehoaz, his father by war. Three times did Joash beat him and recovered the cities of Israel. So that's the book of 2 Kings chapter 13 reading. All right, now we're going to go into the book of 2 Kings chapter 14 reading. All right, 2 Kings chapter 14, here we go. In the second year of Joash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, reigned Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah. He was 20 and five years old when he began to reign and reigned 20 and nine years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, yet not like, yet not like David, his father. He did according to all the things as Joash, his father, did. Howbeit the high places were not taken away, as yet the people did sacrifice and burnt incense on the high places. And it came to pass as soon as the kingdom was confirmed in his hand that he slew his servants which had slain the king his father. But the children of the murderers he slew not, according to that which is written in the book of the law of Moses, wherein the Lord commanded, saying, The father shall not be put to death for the children, nor the children be put to death for the fathers, but every man shall be put to death for his own sin. He slew of Edom in the valley of Salt ten thousand and took Selah by war and called the name of it Jokthil until this day. Then Amaziah sent messengers to Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come, let us look one another in the face. And Jehoash, the king of Israel, sent to Amaziah, king of Judah, saying, the thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give thy daughter to my son, to my wife. And there passed by a wild beast that was in Lebanon and trod down the thistle. Thou hast indeed smitten Edom, and thine heart hath lifted thee up. Glory of this, and tarry at home. For why shouldest thou meddle to thy hurt, that thou shouldest fall, even thou and Judah with thee? But Amaziah would not hear. Therefore Jehoash king of Israel went up, and he and Amaziah king of Judah looked one another in the face at Beth Shemesh, which belongeth to Judah. And Judah was put to the worst before Israel, and they fled every man to their tents. And Jehoash king of Israel took Amaziah king of Judah, the son of Jehoash, the son of, uh, the son of Ahaziah, 
at Beth Shemesh and came to Jerusalem and broke down, break down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim until the corner gate, 400 cubits. And he took all the gold and silver and all the vessels that were found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house and hostages and returned to Samaria. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoash, which he did and his might and not and how he fought with Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Jehoash slept with his fathers and was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. And Jeroboam, his son, reigned in his stead. And Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived after the death of Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, 15 years. And the rest of the acts of Amaziah, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? Now they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish, 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 but they sent after him to Lachish and slew him there. And they brought him on horses, and he was buried at Jerusalem with his fathers in the city of David. And all the people of Judah took Azariah, which was 16 years old, and made him king instead of his father, Amaziah. He built Elath and restored it to Judah. After that, the king slept with his fathers. In the fifteenth year of Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, began to reign in Samaria and reigned forty and one years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. He restored the coast of Israel from the entering of Hamath unto the sea of the plain, according to the word of the Lord God of Israel, which he spake by the hand of his servant Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet, which was of Gath Hefer. For the Lord saw the affliction of Israel, that it was very bitter, for there was not any shut up, nor any left, nor any helper for Israel. And the Lord said not that he would blot out the name of Israel from under heaven, but he saved them by the hand of Jeroboam, the son of Joash. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam and all that he did and his might, how he warred and how he recovered Damascus and Hamath, which belonged to Judah for Israel. Are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Jeroboam slept with his fathers, even with the kings of Israel. And Zechariah, his son, reigned in his stead. So that's the book of Second Kings chapter 14 reading. And you notice it keeps showing a pattern of one king doing good in the sight of the Lord and another king doing evil in the sight of the Lord and how it's all going to be recorded in the Chronicles. So after first king and second kings, it's first Chronicles and then second Chronicles. So when we get into first Chronicles and second Chronicles, it's going to repeat the things before it. All right. So now that was second Kings chapter 14 reading. Now we're going to go into the book of second Kings chapter 15 reading. All right. Second Kings chapter 15. Here we go. In the 20 and seventh year of Jeroboam, King of Israel began Azariah, son of Amaziah, king of Judah, to reign. Sixteen years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned two and fifty years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. Saw, save, the high, save that the high places were not removed. The people sacrificed and burnt incense still on the high places. And the Lord smote the king so that he was a leper until the day of his death and dwelt in a several house. And Jatham, Jatham, the king's son, was over the house, judging the people of the land. And the rest of the acts of Azariah and all that he did, are they not written in a book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Azariah slept with his fathers and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And Jatham, his son, reigned in his stead. In the thirty and eighth year of Azariah, king of Judah, did Zechariah, the son of Jeroboam, reign over Israel and Samaria six months. And Zechariah, let me correct myself, Zechariah, the son of Jeroboam, reigned over Israel and Samaria six months. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as his fathers had done. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. And Shalom, the son of Jabesh, conspired against him and smote him before the people and slew him and reigned in his stead. And the rest of the acts of Zechariah, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. This was the word of the Lord, which he spake unto Jehu, saying, Thy sons shall sit on the throne of Israel until the fourth generation. And so it came to pass, Shalom, the son of Jabesh, began to reign in the nine and 
thirtieth year of Uzziah, Uzziah, king of Judah, and he reigned a full month in Samaria. For Menahem, the son of Gadi, Gadai, went up from Terza and came to Samaria and smote Shalom, the son of Jabesh, in Samaria and slew him and reigned in his stead. And the rest of the acts of Shalom and his conspiracy which he made, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. Then Menahem smote Tifsa and all that were therein, and the coast thereof from Terza, because they opened not to him. Therefore he smote it, and all the women therein that were with child with the child he ripped up. In the nine and thirtieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, began Menahem, the son of Gadi, to Gadai, to reign over Israel and reign ten years in Samaria. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not all his days from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, who made Israel to sin, and pull, and pull. The king of Assyria came against the land, and Menahem gave Pul a thousand talents of silver, that his hand might be with him to confirm the kingdom in his hand. And Menahem exacted the money of Israel, even even of all the mighty men of wealth, of each man fifty shekels of silver to give to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria turned back and stayed not there in the land. And the rest of the acts of Menahem and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Menahem slept with his fathers, and Pekiah, his son, reigned in his stead. In the fiftieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekaniah, the son of Menahem, began to reign over Israel and Samaria and reigned two years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. But Pekah, Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, a captain of his, conspired against him and smote him in Samaria. In the palace of the king's house, which Argob, Argob, and Aria array, and with him fifty men of, of the Giladites, Gileadites, and he killed them and reigned in his room. And the rest of the acts of Bacchiah and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. In the two and fiftieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, began to reign over Israel and Samaria and reigned 20 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from the sons of Jeroboam, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, came Til- Tiglath, Pileser, king, in Assyria, king of Assyria, and took Ijon, Ijon, and Abelbeth, Maacah, and Genoa, and Kadesh, and Hazer, and Galid, and Galili, all the land of Naphtali, and carried them captive to Assyria. And Hoshea, Hoshea, the son of Elah, made a conspiracy against Pekah, the son of Ramalia, and smote him, and slew him, and reigned in his stead in the twentieth year of Jatham, the son of Uziah, Uziah, and the rest of the acts of Pekah, and all that he did. Behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of Israel, Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. In the second in the second year of Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, began Jatham, the son of Uziah, king of Judah, to reign. Five and twenty years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok, Zadok, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He did according to all that his father Uziah had done. Howbeit the high places were not removed, the people sacrificed and burnt incense still in the high places. He built the higher gate of the house of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? In those days, the Lord began to send against Judah, Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia. And Jotham slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. And Ahaz, his son, reigned in his stead. So that's the book of Second Kings chapter 15 reading. Now we're about to go into the book of Second Kings chapter 16 reading, all right? Second Kings chapter 16, here we go. In the 17th year of Pekah, the son of Ramalia, Ramalia, Ahaz, the son of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. 20 years old was Ahaz when he began to reign and reigned 16 years in Jerusalem and, he, and did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord, his God, like David, his father. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, yeah, and made his son to pass through the fire, according to the abominations of the heathen, 
whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. And he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Ramalia, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to war, and they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. At that time, Rezin, king of Syria, recovered Elath, Elath to Syria and drave the Jews from Elath. And the Syrians came to Elath and dwelt there until this day. So Ahaz sent messages to Tiglath, Pauser, Pelissar, king of Assyria, saying, I am thy servant and thy son. Come up and save, the, out, save me out of the hand of the king of Syria and out of the hand of the king of Israel, which rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the kings of house and sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria hearkened unto him, for the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it and carried the people of it captive to Ker and slew Rezin. And King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath, Pelazer, king of Assyria, and saw an altar that was in Dam- uh, saw an altar that was at Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to Urijah, Urijah, the priest, the fashion of the altar and the pattern of it, according to all that the workmanship thereof. And Urijah, Urijah, the priest built an altar according to all that King Ahaz sent from Damascus. So Urijah, the priest, made it against King Ahaz came from Damascus. And when the king was come from Damascus, the king saw the altar and the king approached to the altar and offered thereon. And he burnt his burnt or he burnt his burnt offering and his meat offering and poured his drink offering and sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings upon the altar. And he brought also the brazen altar which was before the Lord from the forefront of the house, from between the altar and from and the house of the Lord, and put it on the north side of the altar. And King Ahaz commanded Urija the priest, saying, Upon the great altar burn the morning burnt offering and the evening meat offering, and the king's burnt sacrifice and his meat offering with the burnt offering of all the people of the land and their meat offering and their drink offerings and sprinkle upon it all the blood of the burnt offering and all the blood of the sacrifice and the brazen altar shall be for me to inquire by. Thus did Urijah the priest, Urijah the priest, according to all that King Ahaz commanded. And King Ahaz cut off the borders of the bases and removed the laver from off them and took down the sea from off the brazen oxen that were under it and put it upon the pavement of stones and the covert of this and the covert for the sabbath that they had built in the house and the king's entry without turned he from the house of the lord for the king of assyria now the rest of the acts of ahaz which he did are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of judah and ahaz slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of david and hezekiah his son reigned in his stead so that's the book of Second Kings chapter 16 reading. Now we're going to go to the book of Second Kings chapter 17 reading, all right? The book of Second Kings chapter 17, here we go. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hoshea, Hoshea the son of Allah, to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, and Hoshea became his servant and gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hoshea, for he had sent messages to so king of Egypt and brought no present to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Therefore, the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Haber, Habor, the, by the river of Gazan, and in the cities of Medes, of Medes. For it was, for so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them out of the land of Egypt, from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, and walked in the statues of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel, and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God, and they built them high places in their, all their cities, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. 
and there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them, and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served idols, whereof the Lord had said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my service, the prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their heart, hardened their necks like to the neck of their fathers and did not believe in the Lord their God. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies, which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worshipped all the host of heaven and served Baal. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. And Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel which they made. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. For he rent Israel from the house of David and they made Jeroboam, Jeroboam the son of Nabat king. And Jeroboam drove Israel, drove Israel from following the Lord and made them sin a great sin. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. They departed not from them until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he has said by his, all his servants, the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria until this day. Mm. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Katha and from Ava and from Hamath and from Seph. Sepharvaim, Sepharvaim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord. Therefore, the Lord sent lions among them, which slew some of them. Wherefore, they spoke, they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of the God of the land. Therefore he hath sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because they know not the manner of the God of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom ye brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel, and taught them how they should fear the Lord. Howbeit every nation made gods for the, of their own and put them in the houses of the high places, which the Samaritans had made every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. And the men of Babylon made Sakoth Banoth, and the men of Cuth made Nergal, and the men of Hamath made Ashima, and the Avites and the Avites made Nibhaz and Tartak, and the Sir. Sepharvites burnt their children in fire to Adramelech, Ad, Ad, Adramelech, Adramelech, and Anamelech, the gods of Sepharvaim. So they feared the Lord and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. They feared the Lord and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Until this day they do after their former manners. They fear not the Lord, neither do they after neither do they after their statues or after their ordinances, or after the law and commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel, with whom the Lord had made a covenant and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. But the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with great power and a stretched out arm, him ye shall fear, him shall ye fear, and him shall ye worship, and to him shall ye do sacrifice. And the statutes and the ordinances and the law and the commandment which he wrote for you, ye shall observe to do forevermore, and ye shall not fear other gods. And the covenant that I have made with you, ye shall not forget, 
neither shall ye f f fear other gods, but the Lord your God ye shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. Howbeit they did not hearken, but they did after their own, their former manner. So these nations feared the Lord and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers. So, so do they until this day. All right, so that's a heavy chapter right there, the book of Second Kings chapter 17. So this discussed how these kings made Israel sin and made them get into idol worship and divination and passing through the fire. Baal worship, worshiping other gods, um, doing all types of different rituals and wickedness that the heathen and the pagan did. So God really punished Israel and scattered them and even at one point got rid of all the tribes out of his sight and then even got to Judah. So um, stuff like this is why we're so scattered all four corners of the earth, you know, because what they did back then led to all the stuff now. That's how crazy generational curses are. That's how long sins can linger on through a bloodline or through a people. You get what I'm saying? Um, when you sin against the Lord and break the commandments and the covenant, things of that nature, um, all your resources, your land, your identity, your power, your possessions, all those things get stripped away. God strips all of it away, you know. And the thing with Israel, they were stiff-necked people. They were very hard-headed, very rebellious um, they did what they wanted to do. And you notice in the scripture, it keeps saying until this day. So even until this day, people are still stiff necked and rebellious. And this is the most wicked generation of all. So this this era is a lot more rebellious and hard headed. That's why so much stuff is so negative today and so much bad stuff's going on today. You know, it all goes back to being stiff necked and hard headed and not wanting to listen, but really not wanting to listen to the Lord and his ways and how to go about things, you know. So that's the book of Second Kings chapter 17 reading, all right? Now we're going to get into the book of Second Kings chapter 18 reading, all right? Second Kings chapter 18, here we go. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old when was he when he began to reign. And he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was also Abi. Abai, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. Also, uh, to throw that note in, Ezekiel is also in the book of Proverbs as well. Some things come from Ezekiel and his mother. So just a little hint in there. All right. And then he removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For until those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it Nehushtan. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. For he clave to the Lord and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered with her so ever he went forth, and he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. He smote the Philistines even into Gaza, Gaza, and the borders thereof from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, son of Allah, king of Israel, that Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. And at the end of the three years they took it, even in the sixth year of Hezekiah, that is the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel, Samaria was taken, and the king of Assyria did carry away Israel to Assyria and put them in Hala, Hala, and in Habor by the river of Gazan, and in the cities of the Medes, the Medes, because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant and all that Moses their servant the Lord commanded, and would not fear and would not hear them, nor do them. Now in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah did Sennacherib king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah and took them. And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria to Lachish, say, I have offended. Return from me that which thou puttest on me will I bear. And the king of Assyria appointed to Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house. 
At that time did Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and from the pillars which Hezekiah king of Judah had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rabsaris, Rabsaris and Rabshakeh from Lachish to King Hezekiah with a great host against Jerusalem. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. And when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduct of the upper pool, which is in the highway of the fullest field. And when they had called to the king, there came out to them Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, Hilkiah, which was over the household, and Shibna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder. And Rabshakeh said unto them, Speak ye now unto speak ye now to Ezekiel, thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? Thou sayest, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for the war. Now on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? Now behold, thou trustest upon the staff of his bruised reed, even upon Egypt, on which if a man lean, it will not go. It will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, until all that trust on him. But if ye say unto me, we trust in the Lord our God, is not that he whose high places and whose altars Ezekiel hath taken away and hath said to Judah and Jerusalem, ye shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem? Now, therefore, I pray thee, give pledges to my Lord, the king of Assyria, and I will deliver thee 2,000 horses, if thou be able on thy part to set riders upon them. How then will thou turn away from the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants and put thy trust on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? Am I now come up without the Lord against this place to destroy it? The Lord said to me, go up against this land and destroy it. Then said Eliakim, Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and Shebna, and Joah, unto Rab, Rabshakeh, speak, I pray thee, to thy servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it, and talk not with us in the Jews' language in the ears of the people that are on the wall. But Rabshakeh said unto them, Hath my master sent me to thy master, and to thee to speak these words? Hath he not sent me to the men which sat on the wall, that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? Then Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and spoke, spake, saying, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus saith the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me by a present, and come out to me, and then eat ye every man of his own vine, and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one the waters of his cistern. Until I come and take you away to the land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of oil, olive and hunt, and of honey, that ye may live and not die, and hearken unto Hezekiah, when he persuadeth you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Hath any of the gods of the nations delivered at all his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods Hamath and of Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim? Hena and Eva, Ave, have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who are they among all the gods of the countries that have delivered their country out of my hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? But the people held their peace and answered him not a word. For the king's commandment was saying, Answer him not. Then came Eliakim, Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, and Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, to Ezekiel with their clothes rent, and told him the words of Rabshakeh. All right, y'all, so that is the book of Second Kings chapter 18 reading, and that goes more to detail about King Ezekiel. King Ezekiel was a righteous king who did right in the sight of the Lord, so it's good to read more about him because he's also included in the book of Proverbs, I think, Maybe Psalms, if he has a poetry, if I'm not mistaken, maybe I'm wrong if y'all correct me, but I know he's definitely in the book of Proverbs. I think Ezekiel gets talked about in Proverbs 30 or Proverbs 28. His mother starts talking to him about wisdom and everything and kingship as well. So it's good to see King Ezekiel did right on the side of the Lord and um, he stuck to the Lord, unlike the other kings. Amen. 
So there you have it, y'all. All right. So we're just going to close out and wrap, and wrap it up on the book of Second Kings chapter 18 reading. We'll continue the book of Second Kings chapter 19 reading on the next uh, Bible series episode. All right. So there you have it, y'all. We'll close out. And upcoming, we'll have our news roundup and then also the church note later throughout the weekend. All right. I pray that you all have a blessed, prosperous weekend. I pray that you all have a blessed, good Sabbath. You guys rest, rejuvenate, lighten up, relax, and just, you know, stay away from the vice of the world. Amen. And get that inner peace, that calm, peace, and quiet. And, you know, just take your time with the Lord and, you know, stay in his presence. Amen. So there you have it, y'all. All right. What I would love to do as I close out is give all the glory to the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and praise his only begotten son who died for our sins. Amen. All right. So here we go. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Yes. He is the hope for humanity. Yes. Yes. He is the Adam, the last Adam, the second Adam, the advocate, the almighty, true, living God, the Alpha and Omega. Amen. Amen. The apostle of our profession, the arm of the Lord, the atonement sacrifice for our sins, the author and finisher of our faith, the author and perfecter of our faith, the author of life, the author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of creation of God, the beloved son, the blessed and only potent, the blessed and only ruler, the branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the capstone, the captain of salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God, the constellation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, wonderful counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer, the desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, the eternal life, the everlasting father, the faith and true witness, faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and the last, the first begotten, the first born from the dead, first born over all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the heir of all things, the high priest, holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the horn of salvation, the I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge, King eternal, the king of Israel. Amen. He is the king of kings. Hallelujah. He is the king of kings and Lord of lords. The king of saints, king of the ages, king of the Jews, the king, the lamb, the lamb of God, the lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader and commander, the life, the lie of the world, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, the Lord, our righteousness, the Lord, Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, 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 Yeshua, Hamashiach, yes, yes, Yahusha, yes, yes, he is the consuming fire, he is the Elohim, amen. Yes, yes, he is the father of the fatherless. He is the father of lights. He is the father of the widows. Yes, yes, he always looks out for his people. He is the sustainer, the protector, the deliverer, the redeemer. Amen. He is a sufficient one. Yes, the name above all names, the God of heaven and earth. Yes, his son sits at the right hand of him. Amen. He is the great physician, can heal anything. Amen. He was a carpenter, could fix all things. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. Nothing's too hard for the Lord. He is the Lord of all, the Lord of glory, the Lord of lords, the man from heaven, the man of sorrows, the mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God and savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrificed Passover lamb, the power of God, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection and life, the resurrector, the revelation, the revelator, the righteous branch, the righteous one, the radiant one, the perfect example, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, the rule of God's creation, the rule of the kings of the earth, the savior, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shiloh, the son of Abraham, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, the son of the blessed, son of the most high God, the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone the builders rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine. Yes, he is the truth. Yes, he is the way. Amen. He is the way, truth, and life, the wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of Yah, the word of Yahuwah, the word of Yahusha, the word of Yahweh Shai, the word of Elohim, the word of Yeshua Hamashiach. Yes, the word of God, the word of life. Yes, the word of the true and living almighty. He is the word. Amen. Yes, y'all, there you have it. We serve an awesome creator, and the Son is amazing for dying for our sins. Yes, yes, in the authority and the power and the name of Jesus Christ, you are renewed, restored, redeemed, healed, delivered, born again, new creature in Christ, repentance, baptism, stability, steadfastness, firm, strong, courageous. I speak those things over your life. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all, you have to remember his son is so amazing. 
He is the seed of Abraham through promise. He is the seed of Adam through humanity. He is the seed of David through kingship. The seed of God as a deity. The seed of Jacob as nationality. The seed of Judah as his tribe. The seed of Shem as his race. The seed of woman as prophecy. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. So there you have it. That's the word for today. All right. Just continuation of Second Kings reading. Amen. Very good reading. You know, discuss the kingship and how it was and, you know, how things are till this day. All right. So we have to always remember why things are the way they are. You have to just look back at history. Amen. So there you have it, y'all. All right. I just pray to God that whoever listens this much, I pray that you repent, start and change your ways. I pray that you have new beginnings to get baptized. I pray that you have a new life. Just new footsteps, new paths, new scenery, new light, just new everything in your life. Amen. And I pray that you stay more strong in these challenging times that are forevermore. Amen. Let's keep working. Let's keep working hard for the Lord until his son comes back. All right. Yes, yes, y'all. Yes, yes. He's come back for a church with no, with no wrinkle, no blemish, no spot. We got to clean it up, get it right, people. Amen. Let me give you the priestly blessing as we go out. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.